This presentation is called The Controversial Edward O. Wilson, Part 1. And a controversy is a public prolonged disagreement involving many people. And Edward O. Wilson has been at the center of many evolutionary controversies. We're going to answer three questions in this presentation. One, what was the social biology controversy? Two, what is the group selection controversy? And three, what is the biodiversity controversy? And Edward O. Wilson is probably the most famous biologists alive today, and one thing that he's remembered for, among many, is that he was a founder of the controversial discipline known as social biology. He's also known as the most eminent student of insect and particularly ant societies, and he's known as a champion of biodiversity. And if you want to learn more about that, he's one of the few living scientists to have a foundation, and the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Foundation has very rich resources, and you can Google that and find it online. So let's start with the social biology controversy which broke out in 1975, and the center of it all was a book published that year by Edward O. Wilson titled Social Biology, The New Synthesis. And as Wilson was later to note, there was only one chapter in the book that was controversial, and that was the final chapter that dealt with the social biology of humans but particularly uh, remarks like this one, that the humanities and social sciences will shrink to specialized branches of biology. So that comes on the first page of that concluding chapter of this massive book on page 547. And it's fair to say that the first 546 pages of this book were not controversial at the time. The controversy all started on page 547. You won't be surprised to learn that among the core theoretical concepts discussed in social biology, we find Hamilton's concept of inclusive fitness and kin selection. So we've discussed that and you'll find one of the sharper, uh, clearer discussions of inclusive fitness in Hamilton's social universe on pages 117 to 120 of Wilson's Social Biology. He also discusses reciprocal altruism right after that. But he noted that while human behavior abounded with examples of reciprocal altruism, it was difficult to find examples of animal behavior and that has continued to be the case in more recent studies. But it's often overlooked among contemporary uh, critics of Wilson that his discussion of inclusive fitness and reciprocal altruism occurred in a chapter that was titled Group Selection and Altruism. And this is important to us because Wilson was an early defender of the value of group selection. And indeed, he concluded this chapter by noting that although the theory of group selection is still rudimentary, it has already provided insights. And above all, it predicts ambivalence as a way of life. And we're going to have more to say on ambivalence. But for now, let's look at the second controversy, the biodiversity controversy. 
And this broke out with another book. Uh, in this case, Wilson wrote the introduction, and the book is called Biodiversity. You can get it for free from the National Academies of Science Press. They have a series of titles that they call Open Books, and you can download them as PDF files and read them for free. And I encourage you to do so. He also uh, authored another book on the biodiversity crisis called The Diversity of Life. And that one's not free, but it's a very good book. In 1988, Wilson wrote that the sixth great extinction is upon us, grace of mankind, and that the earth has at last acquired a force that can break the crucible of biodiversity. That force being industrial civilization. In Wilson's view of things, there are two organisms that are dominant on the earth, and both of them dominate because of their social qualities. One of these are the social insects, and particularly the ants. And he has famously estimated that if you took all of the ants in the world and put them together, you'd have one cubic mile of ants. And that may not seem like much, but it's a lot. He also stresses that ants achieved much of what humans have achieved. They're farmers who farm aphids. They build cities. They fight wars, if that's an achievement. A particularly interesting short work on this is called The Leafcutter Ants, uh, Civilization by Instinct, which he co-authored uh, with another expert on ants. Humans, however, are the other hegemonic species, and we're catching up with the ants perhaps far too quickly. So there's also an estimate in Wilson's work that if you took all 7 billion humans and stacked us all together, we'd make one cubic mile. And so we have a cubic mile of ants and a cubic mile of humans. And uh, compared to other species, we're way ahead of them in terms of biomass. Of course, humans also are known to use a cubic mile of oil every year. And a cubic mile of coal in terms of oil equivalents. And gas use is going up, but we're probably at half a cubic mile of gas use. And so quite beyond our own energetic systems, we have this cultural system of energy, which has grown massively and very quickly. And so it's not just sheer human numbers and the biomass of humanity that's at issue here but our power to transform ecosystems through the application of fossil fuels. Ants are the lords of the tropics, in Wilson's estimate, and he bases this on studies done back in the 1970s, where they found that the biomass of ants in different sample zones of the Amazon produced a weight that was four times greater than that of all the mammals, birds, amphibians, and reptiles combined. So because the ants are so small, we underestimate their biological presence. And in this way, ants are dominant. But Wilson stresses that the conquest of the earth by ants proceeded slowly Ants evolved about 150 million years ago, and by 60 million years ago, they were a social organism, and it's as a social organism that they conquered the earth, but he says that these miniature little conquerors insinuated themselves with quiet little steps, each taking millions of years, and in doing this, they co-evolved with many different ecosystems rather than disrupting them. Now, you might doubt this if you've had any experience with what are called crazy ants. And crazy ants are found in the southern United States. They originated in Argentina. 
And in these areas along the Gulf Coast and in Florida and Texas, they're an invasive species that's displacing indigenous ants in the region. But Wilson's argument is that this is unusual and also has a lot to do with human disruption of ecosystems, including the fact that ants traveled from Argentina to the United States with humans. And ants instead have evolved to be keystone species in many ecosystems. In a broader sense, he argues that if we were to wipe out all the insects, as humans often want to do, on this planet, that the rest of life and humanity with it would disappear within a few months. So even though the insects might annoy us, in fact, they're fundamental to our own survival. And this is something that we overlook at our own peril. Now, humans then have spread in a way that's a lot like crazy ants. We're a globally invasive species, and we've rapidly transformed the biomes of the Earth. And this is a comparison between the biomes of the Earth back in 1700, which is what this image shows, and in the late 20th century. So focus in here on a given area of the Earth, and you can see this transformation occur. And this is the rapid spread and growth of industrial civilization. We first reached 1 billion human beings in 1820. We were at 2 billion by 1920. By the 1960s, we were at 4 billion. And today, our numbers are at 7 billion. So human numbers have just exploded in the last 200 years. And alongside that, of course, beyond the fossil fuels that we've mentioned, species that we make use of have also exploded in numbers. So the estimates are that there are 1.3 billion head of cattle on Earth. And they exist due to humans there are 300 million acres that are sown just in corn. And of course, if we add rice and wheat and goats and sheep and all of the other domesticates, humans have remade the face of the earth for our own uses. And Wilson's argument is that in doing this, we've imperiled our own existence. And the result is observable as what he calls the sixth extinction. So paleontologists have identified five huge extinctions where life almost ended on Earth over the last 600 million years. And Wilson argues that we're witnessing the sixth mass extinction now, but it's not a comet that's caused it or a meteorite or a huge volcanic eruption. Instead, it's the eruption of human and industrial civilization. More to come. We'll come back and look at the group selection controversy. Thank you for listening.